Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women as ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is a social activist with many hats. She's chairperson of the Children's Film Society of India. She works and supports numerous NGOs, runs her own Action India that uh, concentrates on uh, people with HIV AIDS. Uh, she's been a politician or is a politician. I'm not sure that's an adequate description, but we'll come to that in a moment. Uh, she's been an amateur jockey, a national swimming champion, and a Miss India. I'm delighted to welcome Afisa Ali. Wonderful to be here. <laughs> Tell me, of these sort of um, many hats that you wear, I guess the most recent hat you put on has been as head of the Children's Film Society of India. Uh, you know, prior to this conversation and before the cameras, we were talking about the difficulties of working in the social sector and with the government. How taxing has the Children's Film Society been for you, and, and, and what promise does it have under your leadership? <laughs> Personally, I think that the Children's Film Society of India has tremendous potential, and it's only after taking over as chairperson that I realized what a visionary Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was. Because if you look at India today and the films that are being made for children, there's nothing out there that really can uh, appeal to the child psyche. And therefore, our children's film society is very relevant. And it's, uh, it has very little funds to produce films. These, those old bu budgets, how can they be relevant in today's time? So now, luckily, the 11th five-year plan is, in, is the discussions are on. So I'm trying to uh, tell them or c make a commitment of at least four times the amount that they were giving because for 2.89 uh, crores how many how can how many films can you produce mm -hmm. and it's not that the filmmakers are not there or the technology is inadequate Every, everything is better and better it's just the funds now but even the sort of you know the few films that have been produced since Jawaharlal Nehru's vision for the children's film society and a lot of fairly sort of high profile visible chairpersons in recent years you know you've had uh, Jaya Bachchan, you've had um, uh, Ravina Tandon, and, and now you have Sai Shabana, Pai, yeah. Shabana. You know, people with the, with the clout, you would imagine, yes. to be able to both mobilize resources <laughs> and attention. Resources only come through government. Mm -hmm. uh, because we work, it's an autonomous body, but we are supported and funded for, uh, for production. Uh, in the, it's according to the, uh, the 10th, the five-year plan, now the, now the 11th, which we are preparing for. And therefore, you can uh, technically, right now, funds have not come from anywhere else. But I personally feel, uh, why can't we have joint collaborations? Why can't we uh, produce films by funding, ir for example, Iranian directors? They make great films. We just had a, as I took over, we had the Hyderabad International mm -hmm. Festival. And I got the option to see the most amazing films. Mm -hmm. So thought provoking. So what do you think the problem is? I mean, even if there are very limited funds, Maybe one or two good films. We have, but we, we don't have, and seem we win. We win. Uh -huh. We win many national awards. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh, my personal, uh, my personal feeling is that people. It's always people who uh, have no other avenue. Then they'll say, "Okay, we'll uh, apply to Children's Film Society." But no greats have participated because there's no money there. How so? It's, <laughs> it's such a so they're not interested in participating. Uh -huh. But uh, but my uh, my experience also shows me if you look at it, if you uh, a children's film, irrespective in the in the in the recent past, has always been a great a super hit in the sense that uh, parents are looking for films to show kids. We are, uh, and uh, as a parent, I, I also would vouch for that. If there's a great film. I ensure that I take my kids. But isn't uh, it, it a problem in a sense that the whole notion of, of childhood and, 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 and being children has changed uh, so dramatically? Yes, uh, but the essence of who we are, our values, uh, uh, the, 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 thought, the thought process of what makes a good human being, I think is, is pretty constant. It remains the same. But the, the, the trouble is, I think, in today's world, parents don't have the time to sit down and share these experiences. And everything is so techno savvy and access to information is there 24 hours from all over the world, anytime. And uh, so sometimes children learn about all the other things and sometimes forget about how important it is. For example, how God is just one 
or all the, the, the God is there as as uh, unifying is is for us is uh, God you know sort of things like that it's it's mm -hmm. it's it, it's uh, you get so confused sometimes in uh, contemporary mm -hmm. <laughs> India or modern India because there are powers at play they play with religion they play with casteism uh, and uh, you have to help people to realize at the end of the day. We are here and then we are gone. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's do good things together. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about uh, uh, the religion and, and, and the divisions of it. And, and you are, in a sense, a remarkable amalgam of beings. Married to a Sikh, uh, a Muslim father, and a Roman Catholic mother. And, 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 uh, and, 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 and you were sort of one of the people on the forefront against the outrage in, in Gujarat. And you had the great privilege of Mr. Narendra Modi uh, taking you on. Uh, you, you know, the Congress put you up as a candidate in, in West Bengal against a pretty powerful uh, minister. You've been engaging, in a sense, with, with the political process and now with the bureaucratic process. What has that experience been like? I mean, you're obviously driven by a passion with your work with the NGO, and we'll come, that, come to that <laughs> in a minute, to make a difference. But uh, is, is You have asked three <laughs> very big questions <laughs> in, in one breath. Well, we're looking so at sort of the underlying, uh, yeah. looking so at the underlying motivation I to make I a difference. So I, it, uh, to it is connected because uh -huh. uh, when when all my kids, mm -hmm. uh, I talk to them, and I and, and I also uh, learned and I uh, uh, read and I studied. Vedanta, the, the teachings of Swami Chinmayananda from the Chinmaya Mission of World Understanding. And, and I suddenly realized, I said, my God, how wonderful the Hindu dharam is and how, how great is its teachings. And then you have the ritualistic part and then you forget about the, the essence of it all, which is, which is it's a philosophy, a way of life. It teaches you great value. And, um, uh, and but when my kids were small, of course, all the uh, uh, the connection of all religions is there, and my kids uh, all uh, have it in them, and I also uh, uh, have always made them participate in uh, the Chinmaya Mission programs because I think it's so important, and and, and I think uh, the Dalai Lama said it once very beautifully when I heard him talk. He says it's so important to understand your own religion, but then learn about others. Because if you really, truly teach kids that and understand it yourself, no religion teaches bad, wrong, evil, uh, can lead you astray. And it is only those uh, bent of mind that misuse. And therefore, when Gujarat happened, there was a huge misuse of a political mind that was uh, what that was. Uh, b um, uh, bashing the minorities to gain the majority uh, bank uh, for the vote bank, and that exists still today. It's it's like it's a it's an economic powerhouse of India, Gujarat, and I love Gujarat because when the earthquake struck through my NGO, I went there. It's the first time in my life I did it, and I worked in Gujarat for three months uh, doing earthquake uh, rehabilitation, which was I was building bamboo, split bamboo huts, and. Uh, it was a, such a uh, such a wonderful experience. I never felt unsafe. It was in Kutch. There were no trees. There was, and I'm a great photographer. And when I looked, I mean, 360 degrees, nothing stood. Everything was rubble. And I and I I remember uh, thinking to myself. I said, th th this is reality. When God strikes, He knows no caste, no class, no religion. He everybody is affected in the same way. Why can't we learn from this experience? We'll come to, to, to talking about God in a moment. You are watching a conversation with uh, social activist Nafisa Ali. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. <coughs> Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Nafisa Ali. You were talking about God and, and this one fell sweep that created suffering, and, and you've engaged with the Chinmaya Mission, and you've talked about you know hin Hindu values. What, is, what are the, some of those values that you've, you feel have uh, you know, the other impacted thing, you? Oh, uh, the other thing is when, I, when, my, when my kids were li little and growing uh -huh. up, because my husband's from the army and we were posted in mm -hmm. uh, NDA, Karagbasla. So, and uh, that's what I love about the army, because the brotherhood, everybody in, mm -hmm. are into each other's houses, kids coming, everything. Mm -hmm. And we ne uh, I never used to do any puja or anything, because I have from childhood, I've, I've always sort of 
I always call mm -hmm. it my internet, uh, inter, uh, interlink with God, mm -hmm. like I, uh, I always talk in my mind, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I found my kids used to love to go because mm -hmm. there was a visual, there was, and uh, so I, sa I started uh, loving the idols that I saw and I said, why not bring them into my home? Why should my child only go and realize that God exists in, uh, in an idol in somebody else's home? And so I filled my home and I made a mandra and I brought all the different religions and all the symbols of them all, except of, of course in uh, Islam there is no uh, visual. So uh, I, I, it, do it doesn't exist there. But uh, my children so in see terms it as of, a symbol. In terms of, you know, what I was reaching out to earlier was, and in it, terms of this, this motivation for you to go out and work and do things. See, uh, I think religion is truth. Mm -hmm. It is uh, the pursuit of the self, uh, mm -hmm. the betterment of the self. It is helping and uh, uh, reaching out to others. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, I th uh, and I remember when I went to Tirupati, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which is uh, one of the most holy shrines for the Hindus. Mm -hmm. I we were posted in Madras, and I, uh, I said I, I said I had I said I'm not going to come to Tirupati unless my wish comes true. <laughs> so <laughs> within one month, it was a, like a miracle. My wish came true, so I went and shaved my hair in front of Balaji, and then that's when I realized my life. I said uh, I, I've been a mother. My kids are growing up, you know, wife. But there's so much out there that needs to be done. And I, so I said, I, I, so I stood in front of Balaji, I said, I put my life in your hands. Because mm -hmm. I, I had literally disappeared from mm -hmm. uh, the world of, uh, well, media. And I chose to be that way, chose to be a mother, to give them my time. But then I think th there was that inner uh, quest of, uh, I knew there was more that has, had to be done. And uh, so then within a month we were in Delhi and then my whole life, got involved in, because th in 15 years that we were in the army, I did social work with um, Jawans and their wives. I love social work. I love to reach out to people. I'm a people's people. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> passionate about that. <laughs> and therefore, uh, uh -huh. in, so in my social work, it, it is a uh, so exciting. Yet and often, sort of, you know, the assumptions of religion oh, yes. can religion, run religion counter. Was, yes, to religion to was not created really by God in, in, uh, in totality. It, it was again. Uh, a process. That's why it's a, it's really a process of you should not go and you should not make it go wrong. You should always try and make it go right. Mm -hmm. Don't get misled. For example, jihad. The misuse of jihad is is a tragedy. In the name of religion, think you are doing right. That's that is. I don't think any god would allow that, and but it's tell wrong. Tell me that you know you mentioned that you had been away from the media for fifteen years. And I think that, uh, that uh, you know, the media that you've come back to and, and uh, you know, sort of page three is, is almost a horrible term or is it? I mean, what, what you know, wha what is page three? Uh, I used to <laughs> You're uh, on it a lot. Uh, what, uh, you know, initially, uh -huh. see, uh, when there are, th uh, there are a thousand people at a mm -hmm. party, mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't know why, for whatever reason, my picture used to come out and I, uh, and I used to get troubled by it because I do very serious work. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, and I'm not a person who does fashion or dresses mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. uh, Comfortable that this association that suggests something contrary to no, what No, then you what are. I did was I looked up this dictionary. I looked up a dictionary. <laughs> I said, what is this word? Uh -huh, page three. No, socialite. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in the dictionary, the meaning of socialite, the connotation of which was that it's somebody who uh, uh, stands up and stand, uh, makes a place for themselves mm -hmm. in... in uh, in in in, uh, in relevant issues, I mean, whether it's mm -hmm. fashion or mm -hmm. or in style or, or in whatever. So I said, well, anyway, I said, but it's but I thought it was not a word that uh, is true of who I am, because not many people really know the work that I do or follow me around, and the few that have bothered to have been uh, quite uh, amazed at who I. I who I really am, because I really am a very ordinary person who uh, is really trying to make a difference. And mm -hmm. for example, a my work in HIV AIDS. Uh, yeah, this is with, the orf with, with your foundation. This is uh, my own NGO. Yes. No, uh, mm -hmm. for years, for mm -hmm. years, I used to do awareness. Mm -hmm. And then I read it, I, I don't know, 15, 15 years ago, I read a Time magazine report where, this, where I read that you do not have to look at uh, India to know what's going to happen. 
you just or you don't need a crystal ball look at africa this is that that this is india for you mm -hmm. 20 years from now and I, and i said my i said there's something wrong here and uh, and i went at, and so i went, i had gone because my daughter was not well i went to a friend of mine who was in a leukemia hospital and i heard this story about this little child lovely child all pale and drawn and and the story was that this child had been born uh, they had come to be tested for leukemia tested hiv because the, the the it showed that the mother had been transferred of uh, uh, infected blood the child was then uh, born and she nursed the baby and through breast milk this little baby had got you know so i started reading and the more i read the more nervous and and uh, afraid i became for india and i said i must carry on this awareness program and i remember coming to delhi because we got posted i mean my husband left the army and then we came and uh, the health minister then was a friend of mine so i went to the health ministry and he called in his bureaucrat and he brought in a small file and he, and i said you know tell me what we are doing in india and oh madam and this is a fact oh madam you know these international organization they come to our country they pick up small pocket areas and then they say hiv is going to be a problem in india and uh, uh, then uh, then my he did left and i told my friend i said there's something seriously wrong because if the bureaucrat thinks this way what is going to happen to india uh, uh, it's it's unreal and so for about 6 months i sat at home and said i'm not going to talk about it to me and then again the 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 thing, i said if i if i know better and if i sit down and do nothing then this There's something wrong with me as a human being. So now you're doing something. Yeah. What 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 work is is no, your foundation doing? No, then what happened doing? was then I uh, then I uh, became uh, and and uh, I the, uh, the awareness program started uh, on a very uh, large mm -hmm. scale. I used to go everywhere and and I found that all and every interview I gave, I always talked about it to me and all I all I ever got was a photograph and everything else. Then no the journalists would not write about HIV or my concern of there is this, if there's they a scandal they just write about you they, and i and i used to get really they used to trouble me because it was a it was an inner it was like a inner uh, what would you call it light or a burning that you know they have to understand they have to commit media has to commit the government has to commit because this is like i'm talking 15 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. and then i i i i went i I, wa i was at an event again all the photographs came i was really upset and i was just sitting at a, and i went for a dinner and i and sitting and i was very upset and i was just sitting there was a candle and then gentleman sat with me another gentleman sat down with his wife and they asked me what do i do i said oh i what do the uh, hiv and okay and then i started talking and i said i said i'm really concerned because i don't think people are getting it and i said i think i should make a documentary so this man asked me how much money do you think you need i said i don't know i'm not a filmmaker <laughs> and my friend mike pande now my friend then i didn't know him was sitting at the table i said aren't you a filmmaker he said yes i said how much is a documentary cost he said 5 lakhs so this man turned around and told me he says nafisa i believe in you take 10 lakhs go make the films and with those films i started showing uh and it is because of making those films i saw the the suffering of hiv positive people and then i said my god what is this awareness nonsense that we carrying on with because fact is that over over 98 per 98.5% of all international and all funding goes into awareness programs and today from in in 1986 we had one hiv positive person now the recorded cases are 8.7 million uh 5.7 million people in india so here's here's a program that's given you space to plug the issue now what you, what 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 programs are you doing now with your ngo What? you know uh, it, it's 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 a hos it's a mini it's a hos like a hospital it's a hosp uh, hospice because i found and because when i was making the documentaries and i saw the suffering big ho big holes from bed sores i could see the ball and socket joint big wounds as bed sores from the back i, I could see every coccyx This is the person I filmed in my documentary and she was choking with tuberculosis she couldn't she didn't have the strength to cough and that's the only first time in my life I've looked into somebody's eyes knowing that they're going to die and knowing that I could not do much more than hold her hand and stroke her head and I and I made a promise to myself I said never in my life do I want to allow another person to reach this stage if I can help it so I went to Mrs Dikshit and I said Mrs Dikshit was then the chief minister I said I don't have money 
but I have been, my whole life has turned upside down. I cannot turn my back on HIV sufferers. Give me a space. And she says, oh, we are doing Bhagadari partnership. There are so many buildings like we can go and choose one. I said, I know you. I said, you tell me where to go, I'll go. And I, that's why in Rajokri village, uh, they took me there. It was an empty MPCC building lying vacant for seven years. Everything had been stolen from it and nothing there except the shell. And that's how I started. And, and, it's, and the irony or the sadness or the reality, because I worked in it for so long now, is that all international organizations, they have their set plans, they are, have their bureaucracy, they are not interested in giving care. Uh, uh, they all talk about awareness. And, uh, I, and I started talking because uh, David Miller was here then as a UN, direct, a UN AIDS director and I told him, I said, you know, unless you have a multi-pronged approach, how can you beat or make people understand? And, and, and I'm so happy. I remember three years ago when Jaswan Singh was the finance minister of India. It was of course BJP, uh, BB, BB, BJP went power, but Jaswan Singh is an army man. And, uh, and I used to, every year I used to meet him and I tell him, what are you doing? You're not doing anything. And he used to say, well, oh, we're doing so much. So I told him, I said, so he, so he gave me time in North Block. And I sat and I explained to him. I gave him a presentation, him and me. And I told him, I said, why does anybody want to know they're positive? How do you want to make anyone responsible for any action? Because there's no treatment available. Why does anyone to go? So he, he says, yeah, I understand what you're saying. He says, then he called in his bureaucrat. He says, I'm, I want from 30th of May of three years ago, ARV will be made available in India. And uh, uh, I, remem uh, I remember coming out of the meeting and ringing up the head of NACO, who was Manakshi, Datta Ghosh, and I said, you know, I've convinced You've the minister. Now the m amount mm -hmm. he, was, he had suggested was too little, which I, but I said, now once the, see the important thing in, in the government, bureaucracy, open the door. And then everything else will follow. That's my belief and we'll my learning. We'll come learn. to more of that <laughs> in a moment. You're watching <laughs> a conversation with an AIDS activist. And that's the incarnation. We're talking to her now, uh, Nafis Ali. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to a continuing conversation uh, with Nafis Ali. You know, sort of earlier on in the program, I, I, I was sort of trying to take you down the route of uh, talking about what the experience of engaging with the political process uh, had been like for you. And in some ways, it's, it's sort of inevitable gravitating to the democratic processes to influence policy. You were able to meet the finance minister and something concrete happened. And you were talking about, you know, there's a media opportunity and people immediately rush to you. You have a certain brand equity that you what are using for the public good. But are there aspects of this that you find sort of uncomfortable? Politics is considered dirty. It's messy. Uh, I, I don't think uh, politics is di dirty or messy. I, I, I expect a politician or the representative of the people of the specific area to do his duty, which is why I took on Narendra Modi, which you asked me earlier, because he's a constitutional, uh, he's a representative of the people as chief minister. He had no business to play sides. He had no business, and which is a fact, in the strife and the pain and the terror and the maiming and the, the rapes and the burning and the destruction and the hate. To s there was not a single relief camp set up by the Gujarat you government. Know, Narendra Modi is a democratically elected leader. Yeah, yeah. So was who Hitler. Is widely so was Hitler. Yes, Hitler was a Hitler greatly get, loved but, man. But Hitler but didn't get re-elected and no, with, uh, no, no, with no. an increased yeah, mandate. Beca because uh, it, doesn't, it, uh, it didn't exist then. They it's not the a defense of Narendra no, Modi. No, no, it's no, really no. a critique I also of the political process. No, no, it's not. That mm -hmm. it is, it's an advantage to, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, embrace the majority. Mm -hmm. And of course, of course, nobody is all bad. Nobody's, uh, nobody's mind is totally uh, with an ill bent. I mean, Gujarat is an economically progressive state, it, and it's working great. And it's de it's the work, even if Narendra Modi was not there, the Gujarati community would make it the, the great Gujarat state that it is. But there's still it is Mahatma Gandhi <laughs> state. It is Mahatma Gandhi state. But you know, there is there is the perception that that uh, popular electoral politics is not for the honest and the clean, and and I think there is a perception I think that politics is selfish. Mm -hmm. I think politicians are selfish in the sense that uh, they all pretend to want you, mm -hmm. 
which is everybody's complaint. And then when they become your representatives, it's their duty to carry on doing the work that needs to be done. I think that's so important. And those who are don't do it are the people who don't get elected again. Like, look at the, look at the love that uh, Rai Bareilly has for um, the Gandhi family and Mrs. Gandhi. Uh, it, because it is a fact in India when you go to vote, you look at the caste and the goods and the class and the religion and well, whatever. Why do you think that is so? Why isn't, uh, you know, sort of health and education and roads and drinking water and AIDS and, and the kind of work that you're looking at an issue? Why do you it think is an It is an issue, but when the, when the voters went to vote for Mrs. Gandhi, it was phenomenal because she got the majority, she got the maximum number of votes. And uh, the people just saw in her the symbol of trust that she will work for us. And of course, as you know, they'll, the, the Malayan Singh government, they cut the electricity, uh, water is an issue, problems. Uh, when is you become a uh, whole elected office and are a member of parliament, as you could well be and are likely to be, in what ways will you be different? I don't know if it's different, but um, I, I, don't, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any other, other aims other than to make the difference at the uh, grassroots level. I'm a grassroots worker uh, because I've seen life. I've had it all. I've seen it all. Uh, if I wanted it all the way it was, I would have done it. But I chose to be this way. Even in my films, I could have been an actress. I could have uh, become a superstar. And I could have had lots of money. But Why I didn't you become because, a superstar because I'm a basically of money? I'm a basically, I'm a simple person, a, a quiet person. I like my privacy and I uh, knew that I could not be a glamorous person and I didn't want to portray a glamorous person uh, and, and I didn't want to dance in Hindi cinema <laughs> because I used to think to myself, I don't want to look back watching my children and uh, with my children and see myself dancing. You know. But it's, it's, it's so I love cinema. I love cinema. So because what would you like to see, would you like to have your children see you as? <laughs> uh, I don't, uh, uh -huh. No. I, uh, memorable films, and I think the I don't films mean just in, in cinema. Ah. But what would you like as your children mom. to celebrate uh, you as? As a mum, a mum that bugs them, and a mum that gets after them and shouts them down and tells them to eat. And yesterday, my friends, uh, my son's friend, who's seventeen, his mother, uh, his friend's mother, just died in a car crash. So he's feeling very bad. I said, "Oh, son, see, it should have happened to me." Then I then no more banging at your door. Open the door. Have you eaten your food? Don't do this. Don't do that. No, you can't spend the night. Or. So he just looked at me. He said, this, "This just before I came, he came and he hugged me and he lay quietly by my side." <laughs> and I realized that what I had told him, well, he was, was working on his mind. Mm -hmm. So I think that's I, my 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 for my children. I'm I'm their mother, not their friend. They have enough friends out there. I'm here to. Uh, give them the wings to fly but it takes time to feed that little nestling and allow it to grow to the bur to the creature that deserves the freedom to go out there well nafisa ali thank you very much we celebrate nafisa mom <laughs> aids activist spiritual aspirant political aspirant and all the wonderful work that you do thank you very much for creating time for us oh Wonderful <laughs> <too>. <laughs>